I'm just, I'm, if, all right, got it. All right, so what we started with was we started mixing some gray. We got some white paint, a little bit of black paint, and mixed it on a separate piece of scrap paper or a plate or a plastic, something plastic, because um, acrylic, unlike oil paint or watercolor, it's mostly plastic. When it dries, it's, 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 it can actually peel off if it's not on the right surface. Any really slick without it being properly treated will, um, will uh, what, what should we call it? Well, like it'll, it'll peel right off. So canvas, when you get a canvas, it's linen and then it's gesso. Gesso is a um, kind of like a pumice or chalk, um, paint mixture so it keeps the canvas um, from or the, the linen from absorbing um, most of the paint and it also grips on the paint onto its surface so that's why if you have a plate or if you have a, a little plastic um, a dish of some sort or um, lid you can use that to mix our color it's going to be a little easier because the, the paint won't absorb like it is into my paper right here. So, especially when it, the brush is wet, it kind of weakens the paper. So I'll have to remember not to get it too wet to where it will tear the paper. But all I'm doing is I'm creating the sky. And what I did was I created a, 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 a gray color and I'm going horizontally from back, back and forth. Um, and I'm aiming for like a overcast day. So I start my gray and what I'm going to do, I am actually, I'm going to lightly clean my brush, not all the way. Cause I'm okay with it mixing. I need it actually to mix. I'm going to come back in with my cap of white paint and I'm just filling in the gaps. You could leave the canvas, um, exposed, but you tend to see scratch of the canvas. So I'm just filling in where I kind of spread out my lines. But if you notice, I'm just in two directions, back, like front or back and forth, left to right. And what this does is it creates this smooth wispiness of the clouds that we need for our picture. So I'm just filling in the gaps. It's doesn't look like much right now, but it'll help with the whole tone of our painting. So after, so once we get our sky done, we're gonna give that a moment to dry. Make sure we paint our layers are pretty thin. So the thicker the layers, the longer it'll take to dry. So we wanna make sure that we can at some point put our trees are gonna be reaching up. We're doing evergreen trees today. So we're going to be reaching up into the sky. And if you feel like it's too white now, you can go back with it into the gray. You can add some more gray to it. You can even just a touch more black into your gray. So, so, so it'll have a little bit more contrast. And this is good to do while it's still wet. Once it dries, you're not gonna have that smoothness that you had before. So this is the time to do it. So I'm just pulling um, some darker tones of gray. And what we do is we just add a little bit more black to our mixture that we already started. And I almost went right on the canvas with black and that would have been too much. That's what I did. That's okay. Um, if you if you add if you if you go real quick and put um, some white or gray on top of it, you can smooth it up nice. So I'm just making sure that most of my canvas is covered because um, I prefer not to have any of the the um, texture 
to have showing, but that is a personal choice. And if you want to have some of that showing, by all means, this is your painting. You want to make sure it's the way you want it. All right. So my layers are, I'm going to move the camera a little bit so you can kind of see. So my layers are pretty, pretty thin. And I did leave some texture. There's a, I just noticed a couple spots I missed um, as far as smoothing them out. So I'm literally just taking my brush and I'm pulling that white back and forth. And I'm doing this just mostly so it dries quicker. And then I'm gonna clean my brush. All right. So take your time, make sure it's the way you want it. Um, I'm going to be grabbing some green. Um, I got a dark green right here. And what's going to happen is we're gonna start with a dark green um, to kind of build up the shadows. So we got the lightest part of the canvas um, taken care of. Now we're gonna go on this side, it's gonna be the darkest. Not, well, mostly the darkest. Um, we're gonna have the tree stems technically be the darkest, but we want it to have a good base to work on. So getting my paintbrushes. If you were able, if, if you were given a, um, a flat paintbrush, that might be better for these two parts than a round. I was working with a round. So the difference between these two besides the color is one, you get a really fine point so you can dot things. It's really great for lining and, and fine work. This one's good for washes. And technically what we're doing right now is we're creating washes of color. Because um, in, in fact, we are, we are using water to water it down so it's smooth enough, but it washes just pretty much like, it's just like, you're painting like a fence or something. It, you want it nice and consistent. Um, because I, this is gonna be a straight color, I'm not mixing it. I'm gonna use ju it just from the tube right here. Um, I will add some water um, to my brush periodically just so it um, is smooth. And what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna start from the opposite direction, the bottom. I'm still gonna go um, left to right, um, mostly for consistency. Um, I wanted to go easy. If I went up and down, I mean, I could do that, um, but I'm afraid that this, this part right here is not quite dry yet. So I'm just going to work with the spots that are not um, anywhere near what, what I was working on so I can slowly build up the colors. When it's dry enough ready, we can actually, um, when it's dry and ready, we can actually make the details. So this is going to this is going to kind of mask any blank spots that we when we put our trees in, we're not going to be putting them like super close together. So this is going to mask the um, the sparseness of the trees. It'll look full because it will imply that like there's a forest behind the trees that we're, we're working on. But in fact, it's going to, it's, it's just, it's, it's gonna be an easy way to kind of camouflage. Instead of trying to fit all that detail, we're just gonna have all that detail rest on top it creates less work, it creates less stress. It's a win-win. So if you see, like I, I, I do have some streaks on here and I can go back and clean those up later. It's, most of this is going to be covered with foliage and the shape of the tree. So it's not, the, it's not it doesn't need to be perfect. How far oh, out should we go? Um, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go up to about right here. I might actually like right uh, before the it hits the sky because I don't. 
when we're looking at landscape, there's a clear distinction between uh, where the tops of the trees are and where the sky is. So we want to keep that clear. If I wanted, if 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 it was more of like a mountain scene, or if it was um, kind of a hazy day, uh, more of a hazy day with clouds in the trees, then it would be okay to kind of mix it a little bit. But I want a clear distinction between the earth and the sky. So yeah, so we definitely want, we want a nice full canvas full of color. Um, I am watering this down as I go. Um, again, just to be for smoothness, I also um, don't know how much paint you guys got and I wanna make sure you have enough for the next steps too. So water is your friend in this, this state, this time. Anyone have any other questions while we're doing this? This one, this is, it's easy, but it's a little time consuming. That's the real dark green, right? That's the real dark green, yeah. So what's gonna happen is um, with this dark green, we're going to create shades later. Um, you can always, um, we're, going to, we're going to actually mix this with black and we're also going to be mixing this with, our uh, with a yellow and a white. It's just so, um, just so we have some variation with, um, within our trees and um, the lighting. So a lot of times artists only like, uh, they'll, they'll only limit themselves to a certain amount of colors um, to create unity by keep like using one color to lean into the next color, to lean into the next color and it, inevitably um, creates a sense of unity because they're all kind of derived from the same color. All right. So right now it looks like a field. It doesn't even look like a forest yet. And, I'm, and that's a-okay. We, we're definitely all right with that. I might leave a little bit of a gap in between the sky and the forest just in case I needed it for some some reason I think it will be all right because the sky is really faint anyway and it could just imply just like sometimes at the horizon it is a little bit lighter than um lighter than the rest of the sky let's see all right so just pulling all this color a couple times with my dry brush I'm going to clean my brush for now. Oh, I thought this was yellow. This is green. That's okay. That, that will work just fine. Sorry, it looks this. This bottle looks very, very yellow to me and, or the edges caught my eye and I thought this was yellow, but it actually is permanent green lights. So it's like a neon green. So still, still good for what we're working with. We have that color. Yep, I, I, I purposely made sure I had the colors that you guys are working with. So for the, for the fact that I wanted to make sure that I wasn't, it shouldn't derive uh, further away from what you guys are, are creating because that can throw everything off if I have a certain a different set of colors with from a different brands or whatnot thing you guys all right so I have some brown here and while you guys are working continuing um, with the bottom I'm just going to be playing around I'm going to scoop some I'm going to scoop some green 
I'm going to put, it's really dark. It almost looks black. Is that like and a half between the gray and the green, like, or more like an inch? I can't. I oh, it's, it, it's, it does, it's, it's okay. It really it's, doesn't matter. I had, it's about okay. a half an inch to me. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. And it just, it's, it's really a personal choice. Like you can create a, a gap. Cause again, most of this part is going to be covered. Um, where are we? So I have my, um, my dark green, I rinsed my brush. I'm also using the round brush now. If you have the round brush with a tip, that's great. If you don't, there's ways around it. I'll show you how to, to work with that with the flat headed brush too. All right. So I'm scooping some of my brown. I'm mixing this in together. So it's gonna be a muddy green at this point. I want it to be dark. I want it to be dull. Is there, this is gonna be the bark of the trees and I really need it to be subdued because that's not the focus of the painting. The, fo the focus of the painting is the trees themselves. So now it's kind of a very muddy brownish green. I'm gonna clean my brush. I'm gonna pull some black because again, I want it, to, I'm gonna be very careful not to get any of the white that's in my cup in here because you just want it, you want it subdued. We want very, very subdued color. We need the shape of the tree. We need the lines to get us to that shape but we don't want it to be the, the focus. I'm gonna add a little bit more green just because it, it kind of dulled it a little too much. And I want it, or not dulled it, but it, it's still pretty vibrant and I want it to dull it more actually. All right, so it's kind of a very muddy, dark, dark green. And I use the brown, I use the green, the dark green and I use a little bit of black. And because I'm going to take it, I'm going to test this tops pretty good. Yeah. So I can put my finger on the top and it's, yeah, oh, a little bit of paint came off, but that's all right. And it's pretty, it's pretty dry. I have my round brush, um, round brush. If you want a fine tip, you kind of roll it on the palette to make sure we have a fine tip and you pick a spot. It's okay that this is wet. The, the bottom is wet because it's pretty much all the trees are gonna fade into this dark oblivion right here. So I'm okay with that. So I'm gonna pick a point where I want my first tree to start. And I'm gonna try steady as my hand can, as my hand can go because I do shake, most people do. I'm just drawing lines pulling a line going all the way down and I don't even have to um, finish the line. It doesn't have to be a perfect line. Trees are not straight, super straight lines. They can have their own personality. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with a um, flat brush. What we're going to do is I'm going to just use the edge of it. I can't, can't roll it like I can do my round brush, but I can put paint on both sides and I can use the edge to kind of get a straight line. So I am, and you get to decide how tall the trees are going to be. I'm gonna, this one's gonna be taller than the other one. I'm gonna pull it down. And you just have to make some decisions of like what you can go up to. The only thing is when you go, when you go from the bottom up, you might have a little bit more control, but it, the top might be frayed. Like we want a point because these are gonna be evergreen trees and we that point's kind of important. So, and you get to choose how close the trees are together. As I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump back to my round brush. I kind of like, I, I'm used to a round brush. I've like, if you, I had a professor that once said, um, if you could only get one brush, the round brush, um, a number one round brush is all you really need because you can, and do so much with it. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna make this one a little smaller. Oh, 
and that one's a little thick. So if your line's a little too thick, you wanna make it, you can come back in on top and make it a little bit taller. And I also realize that my brush is starting to get a little dry. So I'm adding a little bit of water and I'm just kind of rolling it again. So I, it has a point again. And I'm, this is, I was gonna get a short one. It's, it's gonna be one so I can connect it. Um, if you are wondering how many trees to put or lines to put, that is totally up to you. Um, another thing with the round brush that the flat brush can't do, you can, if you notice, as I go down, I can make this, the, um, the tree trunks thicker. With the um, flat wash brush, I, I don't have that freedom as much because it, it's just that one straight line. So um, I'm gonna just kind of come in halfway and kind of pull it and squish my brush so it makes a lot, the tree stems a little thicker. Now, all these uh, stem, all these trees, so far, I have them coming down at the same point. You can also pretend if you be like behind the trees, you can start slow and then you just stop at a different point. Well, that kind of implies that it's in the background. And I can do the same thing in a couple other spots to make it a little apparent. So as far as the color mixing, you just want to make sure you can distinguish the tree trunks from the ground or the All right. So if you stop in the middle, it looks like it's from behind. You can also kind of stop closer to the horizon line that we created with that line. So let's see. So the trees are create the placement of the trees creates the dimension. So I'm gonna put a big one, big, big one. Oh, I'm just filling that spot. Now again, we're also create, um, creating some foliage later. So the shape of the tree is only gonna be determined by how we count and how small to wide it's going to be. I came, so yeah, sometimes I come back up. I gotta be really careful when I do. Rolling my brush. It's also important to make sure too uniform, like too, too perfect doesn't read real because nothing in uh, nature is exactly perfect. So we, we want to make sure we that little blip, I'll make, I'll make it work. Yep. So I'm pretty, pretty satisfied with the amount on my paper. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clean my brush. I'm going to take a look at this light green, see how light green this is in my. Okay, so this is almost like a lime green here. Super, super bright. Um, so what I'm going to do, as I said, I'm leaning into the colors I've already used. So I'm gonna actually even, I'm gonna create a green space next to the green I already have. I'm leaving some of it alone just so in case I need to come back to that color, I'll have it, but I'm going to try to mix this to where it's not lime green, but maybe, I don't know, like, a, aiming for closer to an evergreen. And I am gonna pull a little bit of dark green over here to see if I can build up the color a little bit quicker. So I definitely want contrast. And you can definitely see there is contrast, maybe not a lot of contrast. Okay. 
So how are we doing on our forests? Do those, do the um, trunks look about, about right? I think so. Good, 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 good. All right. So um, first, I, if you did any in the background, we're going to tackle the ones in the background, the one that's at the end close to the um, horizon line, where the line, where the earth meets the sky is always called the horizon line. And what I'm going to do, I have a dark green, I have now a medium green, I'm actually going to pull a third color. So my lime green super lime. I don't lime sip kind of feels very tropical to me. So I don't want tropical in my winter scene. That's not the that's not the vibe I want to go for. So I'm adding white to the lime green. And I'm kind of making a mint green, a dull mint green, because I have some of that brownish, greenish color right there. I'm mixing a little bit of both. I don't need a lot because. And I'm using my round brush again because I can control it a lot better than um, than uh, the the line brush, but I, you can do both. So I'm going to pick a point a little bit above where the stem is. I don't know if you can see that little dot I created right right here, and I am going to kind of give it some dots on either side. So this is going to be giving me a parameter how wide I want my uh, green to come in. So I'm going or my um, foliage to come in the, the pine needles. So I'm actually trying to create like a triangle. So I'm giving myself dots in the form of a triangle. So top, middle, bottom. And I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of dot down and I'm going to start connecting the dots until I get to the right to all the dots. So it's it's loose and I'm just, I'm tapping it. This one's hard to see, I know. I will switch gears real quick and I will do the same thing for a closer one. I just want it, we want to make sure though that the, the ones in the distance are the lightest. They're the ones that are kind of faded. If you um, look at most pictures, not all the colors are treated the same. When things are in the distance, they actually lose color in our vision spectrum. It, they become a little bit grayer. I don't know how or why, but if you wanted to test that theory out, if you are driving on the highway and it's like, you can see clearly to the horizon line and cars are coming, they all look gray, even the red ones, until you get to a certain distance. It's really weird, um, but okay. So I'm going into my medium gray, right? Or medium gray, medium green right here. And I'm going to pick a tree that's closer. So I'm going to do a dot right here, and I'm going to give a, get a little bit more paint because this is a little watery and I don't want it to drip. And then I'm going to put some dots, or kind of connecting the dots, or playing a game of connecting the dots. And I just realized that it's really close to the color, um, the color that we are working with on the uh, and the the foreground. The bottom. So I'm actually going to try. I might even pull like a dark green to see if I can make it stand out a little bit more. If it blends in, that's okay. I'm. This is more. I can see it, but I don't know if you guys can see it. So I'm just going to try my best to illustrate the pattern we're aiming for. So. So Christmas tree, go down to where the stem goes and then you're gonna reach out to the, where the dots are. And then you're just dabbing your green that you made. So we get to all the dots and you just want them to come out. You want them to flare out towards the bottom. Yeah, and that's getting a little dark. Let me see if I can mix more lime into this so it can stand out a little bit more. And what I can do, we can also use some of our light green that we mix to kind of create um, some snow or some um, interesting uh, shadows, not shadows, but highlights with our, our, our tree. And let's see, you can kind of see it on your screen 
but I'm just going back and forth tapping. I get bigger, bigger as I go. It's okay if you go into other trees, trees, um, trees uh, like come together um, in a forest close together. So they kind of are in between. So I'm getting more, I'm mixing more of this green. So I'm getting more of the dark green cleaning my brush before I scoop some more of the, the regular green, just because I'm realizing that I need more of it. If it seems too bright and vibrant, you can go in with a little bit of brown. Just make sure you clean your brush. The brown is a reddish brown and red and green are opposite colors on the color wheel. So it automatically dulls the green just a hair to where it's, um, I'm going to kind of dot this back. So depending on how spread out those, dot, those dabbing dots you're creating, the, um, the more sparse the foliage is on the tree. I'm going to go ahead and do this. So I'm going above, make a little triangle there. I'm going to probably have to do it. I'm going to make it a little bit more apparent there. Kind of goes invisible. And I'm going to go way out too, right there. Just kind of giving myself a line. All right, so dot, 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 dot. Like it's really squiggly dots. And we literally just keep going until we have a full forest. And just like we said with um, like color, like the faded colors in the background, as you get closer, the colors should be richer. Um, in theory, based off of human eye, um, and you can you can um, even add uh, some straight line green if it feels like it it needs a little bit more. Can get kind of a mixture here, so. So I'm just going back and forth with the, the different ones. I'm going to go ahead and finish the ones in the background because my lime green that I create or the a mint green I created is, is getting dry. So I want to just kind of, so the that's help one comfortable with like making that triangle shape of the tree. You don't necessarily need them anymore. And not every tree is going to have some rules for like the ground and vibe as we come closer to the, the bottom of the, the foreground. Um, there's always like exceptions to the rules if, if you want to have one that looks like it's, it's a little bit brighter than the others, like the, the varying colors of green is going to help it read like a forest. And again, as we go on, it's okay to through trees. It's that's what happens. I'm gonna get some more dark. And so 
So yeah, we're varying colors. And they're gonna overlap, overlap is what you want. You definitely wanna make sure that it looks like a full forest. Sparse is okay, but it, it, we want it to be vibrant if we can help it. Anyone have any questions? So this one's looking a lot lighter, so I might make it kind of look like it's snowing or something. As it gets to the bottom, I can make them darker. You, yeah, there's no rule. You can definitely edit them as you go. Because as they, they react the other of the tree, you might need adjusting some. Like maybe you want some to darker just because you want to have some of the other trees stand out. When you're done or at some point, will you take a picture? Is there any way you can take a picture of that and send it so so I could take a picture sure. at it for late, a Absolutely. little later? Absolutely. Thanks. That'd yeah. Be so Absolutely. Yeah. Again, we're just we're creating the illusion of the shape of the trees. The shape of the trees is what makes... And I think, and being forced to have a light palette kind of makes you focus more on the lines, the shapes, the texture. All right, so I got all the trees filled in. Now I'm debating on whether I want a little bit of snow or at least some, some light to kind of just dust a portion of the trees to get some variance in here. So, Let's say if I wanted it to look like it had snow on it, I would just where there's big of solid color and a dot just the edges. And I would just pick a couple. I wouldn't do all, all of them would be much if the impression. Because this is also technically an impressionist painting, kind of like what Van Gogh does or did, or 
or um, Monet. So if I wanted it just to have some snow, look like it had like a death thing of snow, I would just do like sparingly just a couple dots, really thin using the, I, I did it like a, lime, like a lime green, but mostly white. Like I'm pulling a lot more white than I did before with the trees in the back. And I, I would just tap the edge, especially where oops, that is too watery. So you see it's dripping. I'm going to just kind of get a piece of paper towel and just fix it like that. Okay, and now I'm gonna go back, dot, dot, dot. Not all the branches, but also we have to think about the treatment of the ground because I left those those uh, tree tree stalks hanging a little bit, so they're just kind of floating there. So, so I'm putting a little bit of snow on the top of the branches as I see fit. I'm Lori. Merry Christmas to you and your family. What a joy it is. I'm on the ground and I'm dotting a little bit between a few of the tree stumps or tree uh, trunks. And I'm just kind of lightly pulling some dots and then I'm kind of dotting slowly away from each. So it's kind of like there's snow on the ground, but not a lot of snow. So this kind of finishes up like this scene, just giving ground some weight doing and you can you can decide how much paint you want to do and how much. So this is also one of those pictures that you're going to kind of yeah. at and you're going to decide if you need to add more or less and it's going to be different for everybody. Don't worry about it. I actually touched it and it was still hot. Might be careful. Okay. No, so, so our our time is almost up. We got like two minutes. Is there any questions? Let's shift this over. I don't look All like right. you're. Are you calling huh? those in or not? Oh, no. who who's talking? Let me let me find out who's talking here. Brooke. <laughs> I well the one thing is I hope mine doesn't look like yours because that would be boring we want like you guys and are the secret ingredient right <laughs> I'm not no I'm not no big but it's okay it's just been fun <laughs> I love good it. good well I hope I, I mean if you learn something like I mean like if if it, uh, if it's just the use of different types of brushes, and that's something that's that's more than than uh, like you learn a, you you uh, you're you're growing more as an artist is what I'm trying to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, guys, I hope. Oh yes. No, no, I'm fine. Okay. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Thank and, you. And thank very, you. Oh, thank you. Thank have you. a happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Send a picture. I oh, I will <laughs> definitely send you. a picture. I'll I'll take it on the iPad and I'll let Karen know. Thank you. Bye-bye. I appreciate Bye. it. Bye-bye. Thank you Bye. a lot. It was fun. It's always fun. I love to oh, try. Oh, thank you.